back to one. <laughs> hey, everybody. It is. We're just going to wait a couple minutes to see uh, who joins us. But in the meantime, let's tell them what a fantastic weekend we had, Bethany. We had fun. We spent the weekend together. It was like a staycation. It was awesome. It, it was a staycation. I drove down to San Diego, and Bethany lives on this beautiful golf course. And, of course, Elfie loved all the green grass and the golf course and the possibility of being spotted by a coyote. No, she didn't. Really <laughs> well, <laughs> we binge watched a show, right? Yeah. We watched um, Glow. Yes, Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, which was, it was pretty epic. Yeah, it was pretty good. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I had a lot of fun. I know, me neither. And then we'll, we'll talk in a little bit about um, the other thing that we watched, which was also epic in a completely different way. I've been, I've been telling people about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you've got to see this show. So um, anyway... We're just going to hang out here and talk to Elfie until some more people join us. But Bethany, I'm so glad that you made time for this today. I'm really, really grateful. When did we do your soul portrait? I, I think I was trying to think about that today. It was probably either 14, 2014, 15, wow. something ago. Wow, you're due. You're due yeah. for the next one, right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, and let me just see, I was, I was thinking that we should wear our gorgeous ladies of wrestling costumes today, but then I thought it might be like a, it might be a bit too much for, uh, <laughs> for Facebook live. But next time I'm going to invite you to, uh, wear your gorgeous ladies of wrestling costume. Wait, we have a comment. <laughs> we have a comment here. Let me just see what it is. Oh, yeah. Jenny. Hello, ladies. It's Jenny watching both of you. Hey, Jenny. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Jenny is joining us from, is it South Africa, Jenny? I think you're in South Africa. I'd be so, like, stoked if we had someone from across the world watching our Facebook Live broadcast. Um, okay. So we'll let her respond to us. Anyway, so let's just get started here. I'm going to start with a little introduction of myself and Elfie, and then I'm going to go to Bethany. <sighs> so my name is Siddiqui Ray. I am a visibility expert. I am the founder of Soul Portraits, which is a photographic method that combines a psychic reading and a really kick-ass headshot. And the result of the Soul Portrait has been amazing. Now, I've been doing this since 2009, which is when the Soul Portrait was officially conceived. And I can tell you a little bit about that story later. But the most important thing is that I've done hundreds of them. And the results of having this really authentic, essential image of yourself are astounding. So I'm bringing people onto this interview show so that they can share with you not how genius I am as a photographer, but really what it means to be seen, what it means to be visible in the digital age. So today, I brought on one of my dear, dear friends. I'm cheating. I'm putting all my friends, my BFFs <laughs> first, <laughs> so that this is, like, not as scary. But um, I'm bringing on my dear friend and publishing expert, Bethany Kelly. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to look over here. Actually, I'll just share the screen so that you can see what I'm looking at. So Bethany just wrote a book, 52 Tips to Become a Successful Published Author. I was perusing it this weekend. I was like, hell yeah, everybody that's looking at doing a book should read this because it's simple. It's really simple. And if you're an author or a wannabe author like I am, you know how to it. <laughs> Bethany is the founder and CEO of Publishing Partner, a successful author service business. Bethany turns experts into authors and supports a busy professional in getting his or her book project finished. And if you if you guys have started a book and haven't started it, Bethany's your girl. Um, she's also a founding partner and managing editor of Women Lead Publishing, 
a publishing company that gives voice, credibility, and influence to female authors to expand their thought, leadership, and impact. So welcome, 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 my dear friend, Bethany. I'm so, so happy to have you here with us today. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here too, a little nervous, but good. <laughs> okay, let me just, what did I just do? Show, show, I just messed something up here. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm working with this platform for the first time. So, oh, here, I think this is what I want. Yes, I got it. Okay, good, yay. Um, so Bethany, the name of the show today is Nothing to Hide. And we're gonna talk about how keeping a secret keeps us from really being visible, from really wanting to be visible. And I thought I'd start with how you felt just coming on the show. We had, we had time this weekend to kind of unpack what we were talking about. And I just wanna check in with you on how you're feeling about even talking about what we're about to talk about. You know, so this is, you know, so it, clearly I have a secret and I haven't been, uh, I haven't felt safe or even ready in some ways to talk about it publicly. And this is actually going to be kind of like one of my first experiences speaking about it in a public forum. So this is why I am a little nervous, but also I feel like I am getting to the point where I want to be more visible and uh, looking at all of the things that are in the way of that. And this is one of them, so it's Yeah, tough. yeah so this is kind of like you're coming out of the closet. <laughs> I have, yes. Right? right? And I encourage the viewers to comment as we go along, and occasionally I'll um, tap into the comments and share them so that we can respond. So I want this to be really an open dialogue. It's not just us presenting to you. The whole idea about visibility is, all of us rising to the level of our brilliance by being visible together. So as you comment and as you come into this conversation, I believe that it will be more valuable for all of us. So all reactions, all comments, all questions are welcome here. And I just wanna say that up front. So Bethany, thank you. It's an act of courage to come on this show in the first place and then to reveal something that pretty much Nobody except for your friends have heard about, right? And what we were doing this weekend is we were watching a really, really, really powerful Netflix special by, um, oh my God, oh, Hannah Gatsby. Hannah Gatsby. It's a, she's a one woman show. It was at the Sydney Opera House. She's a comic slash storyteller. And she was really kind of coming out of the closet about her own, what I'm gonna call visibility wounds. A visibility wound is the pain, the trauma, the past, the things that would keep you from showing up and being seen to the people that you really wanna connect with. So that's really a theme of ours today is visibility and connection and how being visible leads to connection. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Good, so before you come out and actually say what this deep dark secret is that you've been holding, let's talk about why, why, why we hold our secrets close to us, why we don't come out and why we're not honest, why we're not vulnerable, why we're not authentic, especially here on that, that what I call the FB, the Facebook. Like why would you not come out and tell the truth about this or anything going on in your life. Why do you think that that is? Uh, well, a few reasons that come to mind immediately. One of, and and I think that they, um, that they really center around connection, which is such a human need, right? The, the need to be connected, the need to belong, and when you are. So, so what I find when I share something very personal or a secret with others, I find it, that I get a few different reactions that can be alarming to me. Um, one of them, and I think this is what everybody fears, is the, the fear of stigma, the fear of judgment, the fear of being considered like 
like that you don't belong, that you are outside, uh, that you're different. And when there are things that make you actually quite different uh, or have given you different experiences, this is a very real fear. The other thing that has stopped me often is the, uh, if you have a really big story or something that's very different is People don't know how to relate, and so they tend to either shut down because they can't really hear what, like they just can't process it, or they get really, really curious and start to ask you so many questions, and it almost feels a little bit violating. So those are some of the things that I have found have stopped me. Yeah, I mean, those are really valid. So basically you're talking about wanting to belong in the fear of judgment. And if you come out and you're, you're vulnerable and you tell this deep, dark secret, this truth, this thing that you've really been hiding, then people are going to judge you. There's gonna be a stigma, stigma because once you, kind of once you come out of the closet with the truth, you can't go back in the closet. People can't unknow that thing about you. And so part of this whole conversation about visibility and vulnerability, on social media for me is about the very thing that we want. The very thing that we are craving is connection. You know that, that there's a piece of us, all of us, that knows that our survival as human beings is hardwired into our brain is connection. I was just listening to Brene Brown braving the wilderness and she had this staggering research study, study that showed the price of not being connected. And it was this, that statistically, 5% of deaths are linked to um, environmental factors. So like pollution in the air, and um, I'm gonna say 5% of the people in her study, uh, environmental pollutions. Then you go to obesity and obesity-related diseases, and it jumps up to 25%. And then you go to drugs and alcohol and mental illness, and it jumps up to 35%. But when she did this study on belonging and needing to feel connected on a social level, 45% death rate because people are not connected, because they feel isolated. And the price we pay for that connection is literally something in us dies. And I think that that's a very, very, very important point to make because we are as sick as our secrets, basically, right? You've heard that we're as sick as our secrets. I think it's a 12 step term, but I think it's really relevant to the conversation today. So I just wanna kind of lead with that, put that idea that statistically, scientifically, there's a reason why not belonging really costs us more than just our reputation, more than just fear of judgment. It actually, it actually keeps us from the very thing that makes us feel so alive and vital, which is really being seen, really being known, and feeling like we have that authentic connection that feeds our souls, that feeds our hearts. Would you agree, Bethany? Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about before we reveal this big secret is your soul portrait, because I wanna put this all in the context of really being seen really being known so is it all right with you if i share your uh your soul portrait yes okay so i'm just gonna do this let me just see if i can just i'm working with this new program so i'm like oh, i don't know <laughs> um so i'm just gonna put us bethany you can still hear me right So I think I have to do it this way. Okay, so welcome to Soul Portrait Transformations. If you're just tuning in, this is a deep, a deep heartfelt, soul felt conversation about how we can be visible in the digital aid age and what keeps us from being visible. So I'm gonna share Bethany's soul portraits with you. And the image on the left is Bethany's uh, would you say, Bethany, would you say that this is your, 
is this your current picture? Is this the one on the left? Or is that, when was that taken? That was taken after the, the soul portraits. It's, and it was a, a headshot, you know, your basic headshot. Awesome, good. So we have on the left, basic headshot. On the right, we have, um, oh, that cuts it off. So on the right, we have Bethany's soul portrait. So Bethany, when you look at these images, when you look at this soul portrait of yourself, what is it that you see? Or how do you interpret maybe the soul portrait versus um, versus the regular shot? So when I did the soul portrait with you, I was really still, it was a few years ago, so I had really just, started out in business and um, I was still quite new, quite tentative, and I hadn't had any sort of, well, I think I'd had one headshot done ever in my life, like by a professional prior to that. Mm -hmm. And so I really didn't know what to expect. Um, what I saw in my soul portraits was, was, um, Shocking to me because I had never seen myself like that before. And by like that, I mean that I, I feel like you are able to capture uh, a part of me that I didn't know really existed yet. Sort of a, you know, a strong, powerful, badass business woman that, that was very talented and capable. And I don't know, you, you, you captured a vision of me that was bigger than what I was able to see for myself at the time. Nice. Thank you. That was, that's, that's awesome. I love that description of that. So before we go on and show you more soul portraits, drum roll. <laughs> Bethany's like, what was that sound? That was me like doing a drum roll on my desk. I'm lucky that Elfie didn't pick up a bark over that. Usually she does. Bethany, so what, you, when you say you hadn't been photographed before, you hadn't, is that true? You hadn't been photographed or you just hadn't seen a headshot of yourself? Well, no, I hadn't been photographed by a professional photographer. Okay, okay. And you were doing this photograph for your new business. What yeah. was your new business at the time? Okay, cool. Well, yeah. So you're seeing yourself differently and you're coming up against how you see yourself now and then how you see yourself um, or your conception of yourself. Let's say it's your conception of yourself. Yeah. Right. Um, I just want to show this comment from Jenny, who is in fact in South Africa. She says, Bethany, your soul portrait captures your feminine power. Yes, yes, it does. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much for that comment. That is absolutely true. And I, I appreciate you saying that to Bethany. I could say it till I'm blue in the face, but she needs to hear it from people across the world to believe it. <laughs> I always say, uh, you know, one of my little taglines for the soul portrait is see yourself, be yourself. And I think that we oftentimes reverse it in that we think we're gonna be ourselves and then see ourselves. But what we see is just a projection of what we want people to see. And going full circle to the beginning of the conversation, it's about self-protection, right? Not being vulnerable in front of the camera. So now that you have this really vulnerable image of yourself and you went and you got a regular headshot afterwards, what is the difference for you? Like what was, was there any difference in the actual experience of getting that regular headshot? And again, I'm gonna just bring it up and I'm gonna show it so that, you know, people can see what we're talking about. Well, the, the headshot, you know, was taken at an event that I was speaking at and it was part of the, the day and and the photographer, I feel, you know, did, did a great job, but it was really the focus was just to capture the moment of, you know, we'd gotten our hair and makeup done and we were speaking and capture that, that uh, event, which I think, you know, that was what that was what was expected and that's what I got. The soul portrait, however, was a was a full experience and it was 
a very powerful experience, not just the photography, but also the, the reading that you did. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was a full experience and it was not just getting your photo taken. It was much bigger than that. How can I describe it? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I yeah. guess the question is, um, again, in, in one moment, we're going to just, we're going to talk about this big secret, but how did this soul portrait, this picture of you, influence like jenny said in the comments she said bethany your soul portrait really captures your feminine power how does having an empowered image of yourself change anything in your business in your self perception maybe it's not like one big shift but can you tell in your life now four years later that that soul portrait and seeing yourself in that way as jenny says in your feminine power what difference did that make if any well, one of the things that I have uh, recognized throughout is uh, not not that exact picture, but one of the pictures from our soul portrait session I put on the back of my business card. And whenever I give that card to somebody, I and they see the the photo. There's there's always a comment about. Uh, no, it's the other one. Oh, I don't have that other one in there. Oh. I'll show it Sorry, to you. Sorry, show us your card. There's so many good ones. I didn't know which one she picked. Can you see oh, it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's the card. Here's the. Oh, hold it down a little bit. That's a great business card. I like that square format. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Good, it's... good. Nice logo, of course. Moo business cards. They're fun. Moo business cards. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, but whenever anyone sees it, there they always comment on the photo like, wow, that's a really great photo of you is the typical thing that they say. But what, what always surprises me is kind of how clearly they see me or how like it, it, it creates this interesting impact that you, you know, I wouldn't have expected. But people always comment on it and comment that that wow, that's really me. And I always am kind of almost puzzled and a little surprised and pleased when I hear that because I'm like, okay, <laughs> Is that, you see me, excellent, great. <laughs> but it's uh, pe people always comment on it and I feel like, I feel like I have grown into the image in a way over the years where it really felt, when I first took it, it felt really different. Like I didn't feel like me. Mm. And now I do more and more. Like um, when you saw the image, you didn't feel like you? Yeah, like I felt like what the image was showing me was not how I felt as a person. It was, it was a different version of me than the one I was accustomed to. It was a, it was a bigger, better, like more beautiful and more grounded and more powerful version that, of me than I saw myself as. Interesting. I believe that we all create our own prisons of perceptions. Like we keep ourselves locked in this jail of it's not okay to be me because, 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 because. And we're going to talk about what that looks like specifically for you in a moment, but. I want to say that today is Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela Day, right? Yeah. And I actually photographed Nelson Mandela. And he had been out of prison for a couple of years, but he was visibly affected by it. Like all the years in the limestone uh, quarry, like working as a slave basically ruined his eyesight. So his eyes were like barely opened and it was very interesting, but this whole idea of kind of like self-imprisonment and what I'm going to call the dysmorphia of self, like our self-image dysmorphia, really comes about as a result of we think we see ourselves accurately. We think we look in the mirror and what we see is what we get, but that's actually my hundreds of soul portraits have proven to me time and time again that who you think you are is not who the rest of the world sees, which is exactly why we're afraid to really 
show ourselves, show our faces to the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how about talking about what this secret is, maybe just in a general broad perspective, because today's broadcast isn't really about unpacking the whole story, because I know that you're going to be writing about it in a book, and I, I don't want to do a spoiler alert. I just want you to just share the the biggest, biggest thing that has kept you from being visible to yourself and to others is this fear of people knowing this truth about you. Yeah. Yeah. And that truth is that I was born and raised in a cult and spent a lot longer of my adult years there than I would have liked to. Mm -hmm. And when I left and really was establishing myself and my independence and creating a life for myself, um, it was a very, very difficult transition, obviously. And I felt um, very alone in the world and very uh, untethered from everything that I had known and everything that I had experienced. Mm -hmm. And so it was, uh, you know, try, trying to establish myself for, for myself and my daughter and and transition into a new life and into a new world and do what I had always wanted to do and create a new life for myself. And then also it was, it was, a, it was a lot, it was a lot <laughs> to deal with. And, um, I found it very scary to tell anyone any of that. And in fact, Sid, when we met, I think that you might have been the second person that I had told that, that, you know, uh, so that was, that was a big deal. And obviously it's been some years now and I have told more people, um, and I have gotten a lot of support and a lot of, uh, a lot of connection from the people that I have told and that have been, they've been very supportive. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of fear there, a lot of fear, a lot of fear of judgment, a lot of fear of stigma, a lot of fear of wondering if that would negatively impact my life or business or friendships or the new life that I was wanting to create for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it okay if I ask you a couple of questions about this? How old were you when you left the cult and you mentioned your daughter? How old was your daughter? Yeah, my daughter was a teenager and I was in my, I was in my thirties. So literally from birth to thirties, you're living in this, situation and when we say cult can you define cult because i think that we have like you know people drinking kool-aid and everybody killing themselves because this charismatic leader says you should um yeah. and people have this idea that a cult is like all these lemmings just following this one person that dictates their whole lives but what was your experience of what a cult is well, it was a high commitment religious cult. Um, and I don't really want to go into all of the details because it's, but, but it, it definitely impacted every, every facet of my life and my upbringing and how I lived my life. And typically in those types of cults, there's a lot of rules and there's a lot of expectations and you, um, you find belonging and you find acceptance by following the rules. And if you don't, uh, you're punished in some form or way, right? Um, and that would look differently being punished as a child as opposed to being punished as an adult. But there was a very strong uh, need for me to conform, to comply, to be, uh, to, to do all of the right things. And I was, and I had gotten quite good at that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that I was able to survive and thrive in an environment that was quite unhealthy, uh, mm -hmm. to put it mildly. Right. And, and eventually, you know, you can't, you can't spend your whole life being someone that you're not or really keeping who you are under wraps or hidden before something goes wrong. And what really went wrong for me is that I lost my health in a very significant way mm -hmm. where where 
I just couldn't function anymore. And I was ill and I was bedridden and I was in pain. And that caused me to really examine my life in a different way and start to look at, well, wait, I'm not really happy. Like I'm doing all of this stuff and I think I'm doing it, you know, because God wants me to, because that's what's expected of me. But what if that's not really me? What if that's not really what I want? And it was a very, you know, I can speak about it in a sentence here, but it was a process. It was a difficult process to go through where your entire worldview really comes into question and and your identity comes into question. Like, well, if I'm not this, then who am I? Yeah. Um, and that's what I've been discovering in the last several years as I've been finding out who I am and, and building what I want to do and building a new life for myself. Thank you for sharing that. I feel like really, really honored Aww. that you would feel safe enough to share it with us. And it's, it's so powerful when I'm thinking about what it means to buy into a society fully. And I'm not going to get all political here, although I could, <laughs> but what it means to fully buy into this, this concept of, I have to conform, I have to fit in, and if I don't, there's a really high price to pay. And again, bringing it back to Nelson Mandela, here he is living in South Africa, and I think it's like amazing that we have actually Jenny from South Africa on, you know, on the call with us today as a participant, as an observer. Um, and here's Nelson Mandela speaking out against what was the societal norm? What was apartheid? And he is a loud vocal advocate. And what happens? He's imprisoned for 34 years. And this is this is why this is why I'm so passionate about having these conversations because I believe on a human level we want to be seen, we want to be heard, we want to be known, and we want that attention. And yet when it's about telling our truth and there's a price to pay for telling that truth, then we have a choice to make. And either we get more loud and more vocal and there's a price to pay for that, i.e. Nelson Mandela being imprisoned, or there's a price to pay for keeping the secret. Mm -hmm. And so Bethany, I'm really interested to know once you came out of that cult, which was just six years ago, that wasn't really all that long ago, right? Well, more, more like eight. Okay, more like eight. Okay. What was the price you paid for keeping that secret? Maybe physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, relational? Well, initially, honestly, I think it was a pretty smart thing to do as I, as I, it kept me safe, really, as I uh, navigated really an entirely new establishing myself in the world mm -hmm. um what it what it did do is it kept me from genuine connections because i felt like i couldn't i i, I had so much fear around what divulging the secret might do and the responses that it might get that i might get um so i think that it made it harder in some ways for me because there was probably a lot of support that I could have gotten from other people that I didn't get because I was not willing to share. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the interesting thing is just kind of bringing it around full circle is that uh, the, you know, I've done a lot of therapy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good on you, mate. As they say, yeah. I was really right. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of therapy, lots of reading, lots of lots of personal inner work, obviously. But um, as I have come to accept it, this part of me a, a little more, and I have come to be more comfortable with it, and the more that I am able to tell others, what I find is that instead of the, you know, in like what I really want, I get, which is the connection, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at least with the people that matter. Right. And, and it is one of those things that it's a kind of a, you know, 
it is a really big story and people tend to polarize around it. Either they're like, ooh, she's kind of weird. Or they're like, wow, I'd like to be in your world and in your life and be part of your, you know, be on Team Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I know that you have really incredible stories around it. So let me ask you this. For those of you that are watching, Bethany just kind of came out of the closet as having lived in a, what I'm going to call a legit cult. <laughs> and and my question for you is the secret that you kept, if you could tell other people that are watching either now or in the future to this interview, um, if, if looking back, you could give some advice as to how to either hold a secret, how to deal with the secret, how to be with the secret with other people, um, what would you say? You know, I think that there is, Okay, whenever there's a secret, there's always shame, right? Otherwise, why would there be a secret? If you had no shame around your secret, there'd be no secret. And typically where there is shame, there is, there is very often trauma connected with it. Mm -hmm. And trauma impacts us in a very significant way. And I feel like the best advice, like if I could go back in time and, and give myself some advice, um, the advice that I would give to myself is, Face your trauma and deal with it because mm -hmm. when you can come, when you can remove some of the shame that is connected to your trauma and you can process it and you can start to move past it, then you won't have so many uh, barriers to connection. You won't have so much shame around the secret. It will be easier to, to, to be yourself and to show up as you without because there'll be less shame around it. So I really feel, I mean, that's kind of like, oh, go to the doctor, go to the dentist, get your root canal. It's not like <laughs> really fun advice or anything because it's not easy to do. Yeah. But I feel like that is really the best thing. Like if you want to be visible, if you want the connection that comes with uh, not having secrets, dealing with your trauma and dealing with the shame and working through it is probably the fastest way to get there. Absolutely. Amen. I just want to take a moment to show again, just a couple of your soul portraits so people can really see what we're looking at. Um, I'm just going to go through them. Hold on. Hold on here. I got to create some space on the screen for this. So here's a beautiful one of Bethany. I also really, really love this one. Again, if you weren't at the beginning of the broadcast, here's the headshot that she actually had after the soul portrait because it was a great opportunity in that moment. And then the soul portrait's on the right. And then here's a beautiful one. Now this was shot at the Hotel Bel Air, which we love. Um, and then this one, so uh, amazing. Um, let me just get out of there. So Bethany, yeah, I just want to bring it back for one moment to my friend Nelson Mandela. And he, he has something that I think is really relevant in this conversation about visibility. He said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave person is not one who does not feel afraid, but one who conquers that fear. So I want to acknowledge you for joining us today and being on that, being with us in this broadcast and really sharing this truth about yourself. And I'm, I'm hoping for anybody that's viewing either now during the live viewing or afterwards that your takeaway is that you know, the secret and being not who you really are is a barrier to connection. Anything else you want to add to that, Bethany, for our audience here? Well, I think I, I love this quote from Nelson Mandela. And I think that it's very true. I think that you'll never feel ready. It's, a, it's what I tell authors I work with all the time. Like, you'll never feel ready. To, to write your book. But if it's the right time for you to start, then it's the right time. And you can just put one step in front of the other and you can get where you're trying to get to. And I feel like that has been my journey too with 
um, the enormous change that I experienced and also even coming to a place where I can talk about it, it has been one, it's been uh, one step at a time. You know, we, we think sometimes that we have to take these enormous steps and sometimes we can and sometimes that's what the situation requires, but also uh, sometimes that's too much for our systems. It's, it's too much for, uh, it's too much. And then we have to look at what is doable. What is the next small step that we can take that feels, that feels doable? And if you keep taking those small steps, whether you feel ready for them or not, you can make a tremendous amount of progress over time because you've been consistently moving in a direction that you want to go in. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I am just bowing to you for your courage. As Nelson Mandela said, what a perfect day to do this interview. Really, and um, I'm gonna send you uh, a print for being here with me online today. I'm gonna send you a print of that picture from Nelson Mandela. Ew. So that you can always remember that sometimes the price we pay for freedom is speaking up and having the courage to speak up. And you have certainly demonstrated that courage today. So thank you so much, Bethany. I really, 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 I bow to you for being here <laughs> once again. <laughs> My name is Siddiqui Ray. I am a visibility expert and the founder of The Soul Portraits. Join us next Wednesday, different time because the Australians had a little bit of a conniption fit. They weren't going to wake up in the middle of the night to tune in. So we are changing it to Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Next week, I'm going to have on my dear friend and uh, coach, Kevin Sakati, who's going to talk about no more Mr. Nice Guy, how his soul portrait showed him the power of presence in corporate America. So thank you so much, Bethany. I love you, love you, love you. And I am bowing for your presence here today. <laughs> thank you so much. It's great being with you all. Thank you.